Hey everyone, my name is Paul Vicheski and welcome to the Real Estate Classroom YouTube channel where our mission is simple and that's to help you pass your real estate exam the first time. Real quick, as always, give this video a thumbs up, hit that red subscribe button, click on the notification bell. In today's real estate exam prep video, we're gonna discuss common contract contingencies. Say that three times really fast, common contract contingencies. All right, let's get to today's video. So in today's real estate exam prep video, I'm gonna discuss what's called common contract contingencies or contract contingencies. Now understand that any contract, whether it's real estate or otherwise, can have contingencies in the contract. They are provisions that are added into the contract. And the parties have to agree to those contingencies. So in real estate, the buyer may put certain uh, contingencies in that contract and then the buyer and seller need to agree to it. A tenant may put a certain contingency in a lease agreement and the landlord and the tenant have to agree to it. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you go to the dealership and you want to purchase a vehicle. So you start negotiating with that dealership, but you really want floor mats. So you may put in that contract. If the dealer put, if the dealer provides floor mats, then I will purchase that vehicle. And if the dealership agrees to it, then that contingency is in that contract. So when it comes time for that dealer to deliver the car, if those floor mats aren't in there, then you have redress against the, the dealership. In a lease contract, a common contingency that a tenant will put in there, uh, if they are a military tenant, they may put a uh, moving provision that if they get orders, then, um, you know, during the term of the one year lease agreement, then they can break the lease legitimately penalty free. Uh, in real estate, typically we see the contingencies in the, in the purchase contract, and there are numerous contingencies that you can see. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a story. I, I remember one time many, many years ago, uh, I was working with a buyer and we submitted an offer uh, on a property that was for sale. And there was a uh, an engine that was hanging on change in, in, in the garage. Uh, it was a 350 big block or a 350 small block. I can't remember. But anyways, the buyer put a contingency in the purchase contract that said that I'll purchase your home if the seller agrees to sell me that engine. And so that was a contingency that was put into the contract. So anyways, Contingencies are very common in real estate purchase contracts. So let's get to some common real estate contingencies that we're gonna see in the purchase contract. The first, the first one and most common is probably inspection contingencies or what we call due diligence periods. Now, depending on the part of the country that you're gonna be operating in, you may see due diligence periods or you may see actual inspection contingencies. Now, a due diligence period is just simply a contingency in the purchase contract that says that the buyer and seller agree to a 10 or 12 or 14 day, they negotiate the time frame, but a certain number of days or weeks or months uh, to have all your inspections done. So for example, in residential, it is very common to have a seven to 14 day due diligence period. So the buyer is allowed by the seller to have any and all inspections that they want done during that period. If you're buying industrial property, it could be months. The, the due diligence period could literally be weeks or months. I've even seen a couple of years. It just depends on the type of real estate that's in the transaction. An inspection contingency is more specific. So the uh, the home the the purchaser or the buyer may just want the roof inspected or the foundation inspection uh, inspected or the well or the septic, uh, so they're just going to put that specific inspection request into the offer. Then the the seller is going to consider that, and if the seller agrees to it, then they have to allow that buyer to perform that inspection. Now, here's typically what happens with all of these contingencies in a typical real estate purchase contract, whether it's the inspection, due diligence, or one of the other ones we're going to talk about. It's it basically the way it ends up is the buyer's going to request it, the seller agrees. Once the seller agrees, the inspection is done. 
and this and if the buyer does not like the results of the inspection they have a couple of options they can a say i i understand that the well and the septic the the inspections aren't very favorable but i'm willing to move forward with closing anyways we will deal with the issues after closing b they can ask the buyer or i'm sorry this the buyer can ask the seller to repair or fix or some, some, way, some other way compensate the buyer for that deficiency. So for example, let's say the air conditioner is bad. The, uh, the buyer can say, we want the seller to re repair or replace the air conditioner. Or the buyer may say, um, reduce the price by $5,000 and we will take care of the air conditioner after closing. That is an option. Now, the seller doesn't have to agree with that. If the, uh, if the buyer asks for something under that option, the seller can say, no, if you want the house move forward, we're not gonna do anything. And then the buyer has a decision to make. They can, they can either say, fine, move forward, or they can just terminate the contract. And then C, option C is they can say, you know what, the inspection report is too, um, there's too many things, I'm not comfortable with it, so we're gonna terminate the contract. Now, what these contingencies do typically is they allow the buyer, should the buyer decide to terminate the contract, to get to terminate the contract penalty free, so they get their earnest money back, and and you know it it uh, it prevents the seller from suing under specific performance, those type of things. So there are contingencies built in build in typically protections for the buyer. So the most common one here is again inspection contingencies or due diligence period. Let's look at number two. Another one is financing. Very common to see a financing contingency where the buyer uh, needs financing to purchase the home and it's the buyer's ability to secure financing. And if the buyer cannot secure financing, then they can terminate the contract penalty free. Now, I know this question is gonna come up. Well, well don't buyers get pre-approval letters and the answer is yes in the real real estate world they do but it's also true that pre-approval letters are about as good as the paper they're written on um, just because a buyer is pre-approved for a loan doesn't mean that they're it's ultimately they're going to get the loan so that's why there's financing contingencies put in the contract number three the ability for the seller to convey or transfer free, clear, marketable title, meaning they're gonna they're gonna convey convey ownership to the new buyer, uh, where the title is free and clear of liens and encumbrances. So there's no child support liens or mechanics liens or judgments or things like that. That's why we do title searches. Number four, a survey. There are some many times when the buyer wants to have the survey done. Now a survey is. Uh, is a process where you identify precisely where the boundary lines are and where the improvements such as houses and barns and those type of things, where they are located uh, in conjunction with the boundary lines. Are there easements, utility easements and those type of things uh, on the property? So a survey is going to identify all those things and sometimes buyers want to have that done. And again, the contingency typically reads contingent upon a satisfactory survey. So the survey is done. If there's issues with the survey, there are boundary lines that, that are different than you thought they were, or there was an easement in a particular place that's going to prevent you from building a barn, then that will impact your decision to buy uh, that piece of property and it allows you then to uh, get out as a buyer get to get out of the, the contract free and clear of penalty. Number five, wood destroying insects. You know, in many parts of the country, termites are an issue. So it is common in those parts of the country to have a termite inspection and also not only the inspection, but to see if there was previous termite infestations that resulted in damage to the property. Number six, a home sale contingency is very common. So this is what we call the, the domino deal. So let's say that I am buying your house, but I also own a house currently, and I have to sell my house before I can qualify for financing for your house. So I'm going to put an offer in on your house, 
with a contingency called a home sale contingency, meaning you're going to give me permission. You're going to accept the contract as the seller or as the seller of your property that says, Paul, I give you 30 days or 45 days or whatever the time frame you want to negotiate to sell my house. So then I can move forward with buying your house. We're not going to get into real specific details on it, but home sale contingencies are very common. Number seven, pre and post occupancy is another one. We don't like doing them in the real real estate world because there's a lot of bad things that can go wrong, but they are still uh, they are still prominent nonetheless. So this is where we're allowing the buyer to move in prior to closing or the seller to stay in the property after closing. And again, there are a lot of risk with this and we're not gonna talk about those in this particular video, but that is considered a common a contingency in a purchase contract. And then the last one is eight and nine. This is more for commercial and industrial type properties where uh, the buyer may be, uh, there may be a legitimate reason why they're gonna need environmental studies, where this is, where this does, where there is an environmental assessment that's conducted, where there are impact studies that are done. Maybe the buyer has a particular intended use for this piece of property and it's gonna require zoning changes. So they put a contingency in the contract that says uh, contingent upon the buyer getting approval from the zoning commission or a, a city council to change the zoning. And that's why in commercial and industrial transactions, these due diligence periods or these contingencies may be months or years even because these processes like change in zoning, they're not a fast process. Uh, we typically don't see these type of things in the run of the mill, you know, residential sale, but very common in the industrial and commercial arena. Again, these are just very common contingencies that you as a real estate professional, you're gonna see in your in your real estate practice and also a question or two that, that might pop up on your real estate licensing exam. Now, if you're gonna continue studying, check out this video right here. And please do me a favor, if you haven't subscribed, click the little circle to my left. Please, please, please do that. It helps grow the channel. Comments and questions down below. That's all I got in today's video. I'll see you all in the next video.